be, be I know. a professional, Stacey Keach. Like, you, you do videos. <laughs> You've done videos for a living for years. I know. You know the, only you know, the only other thing, the only other thing that I might want to talk about is the fact that people need to stop trying to bend their messaging towards COVID because it's annoying. Okay, so that is an interesting start. Okay, right, uh, start off. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're Stacy Keach. Last time I checked. The last time you checked. And we, we, when did we meet? A year ago? It was at the, the Fancy Pants place downtown with all the wood. Uh, yeah. And old we, furniture. We, we met at the club because our mutual friends for about two years had been telling us, what do you mean you haven't met John? And you've been hearing, what do you mean you haven't met Stacy? So yeah. we set it a date to ironically work remotely together. And where, what, what club is that again? Like, what's it called? It's called the Rito Club. The Rito it's, Club. I had to wear a suit jacket that day. You did, but you wore sparkly shoes. Uh, they weren't sparkly. They were metallic gold chucks. Um, but I can understand how there would be a, a confusion on the, the sparkly terminology. Talk to me more about this, this messaging shift towards COVID and why that's annoying. Um, I think that, you know, in crisis communications times, everybody kind of starts to play by the book a little bit, which is, which is normal. Um, but I think what ended up happening is we all ended up getting these floods in our inboxes of like somebody that you bought something on Amazon 20 years ago is like, we're concerned about your health. And we all got these messages from CEOs like we were somehow you know, still like, oh man, I can't believe XYZ CEO really cares about me. I should really go buy some more sparkly shoes from that guy. Um, and then it kind of morphed from there in the corporate sense into, you know, on LinkedIn, a lot of people are trying to figure out, well, you know, what do I need to say right now? And, and how do I shift things? And I think the important thing to remember is you don't, if you are not in healthcare and you don't have anything to add to the situation about COVID and you're selling widgets, then just keep selling widgets like you've always done. You know, um, there might be some tactful things that you need to do. Like for example, if you're a cleaning company, you don't want to advertise that you have a product that can kill COVID because that would be in poor taste. Um, and also not a real thing. Um, so you have to be careful around those boundaries, but I think just making sure that you just do the same marketing and messaging that you've always done and stay the course rather than figuring out what do we need to do for communications in this time? Just be you. So you, you've been, uh, in communications for a very long, not a very long time, uh, but a long time. Mm -hmm. No, like, I mean, like you're still a vibrant young, you know, professional. I mean like young as in. I'm yeah. turning 40 this year, and I don't think anyone's going to come to my birthday party. I had like a big I, thing planned. I just turned 40 on Monday. <gasps> Happy birthday. Thank you. And I'll give you my notes. Um, okay. Ultimately, there's more aches and pains. Um, there's now a more regimented vitamin strategy, you know, um, more tea, less coffee. There's the whole book. Like, there's a whole rule that you have to follow, apparently, now that you're an adult. But oh, um, you, you've been in comms for, for your career. Mm -hmm. um, you were self-employed for a long time um, and you've now made the transition last fall uh, to run comms for the CHEO re uh, research division. What's that like, especially now? Um, the funny thing was it took me a full month to figure out how to work like a normal person because I had been running my firm remotely for five years. So I had to figure out how to go into an office every day and be a normal functioning person of society. Um, and I think the funniest part was when um, my husband and my kids dropped me off every day because I didn't have parking at the beginning. And my six-year-old at the time said, Mom, why do we have to keep going to the same place every day? What's up with that? Because we had trained him not that mom, it's okay that mom wasn't normal. So we had to mm -hmm. retrain him that mom was normal. Um, but I think uh, I'm super happy that I'm in that role now for two reasons. One, one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to take the opportunity was because you know, in, in communications and branding, you, the work that I do, I'm good at, but sometimes I do it for, you know, um, some people that are not the most higherly moral compass, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you do your good job and you're known for your work, but I really wanted to be able to work on a file that really did change the world. And now I'm actually doing that. So some of the work that I've been lucky enough to do in the comms department since COVID started is our research teams have been working obviously on COVID related material 
and it was our teams that got the international press in the New York Times and in the Guardian for their decontamination of N95 masks. Wow. So, yeah, so the fact that, you know, that's me, that's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy to be able to, to, to tell my kids that. And so the kids now, you've got two, what is it, seven and four? Seven and three. Seven and three. So what, what grade is that? Or one's not uh, in school? No, one's not in school, which proved kind of interesting because the, the, the one in grade one is doing Zoom calls with this teacher. And then the daycare one is like, well, why isn't my teacher calling me? And it's like, she's, she's on vacation right now. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of an awkward one. Um, but yeah. So how, how has that transition been? Because now you have another job teacher. Um, what's that like? I'm not going to lie. I don't do it. Um, and that's not to say that they're not being taught the schedule that my husband has, and he is still an entrepreneur. So he has a little bit more flex than I do. Um, I get up at five. I work from five until noon. That's my head down time. And he watches the kids. He does the homework during that time. And then we switch at noon and he gets the corner of the bedroom and I watch the, the kids and then kind of kick emails until, until five o'clock. So it's almost your quarantining. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. There's a word that you can use that I stole from someone else. It's great. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier about, you know, when, when we get through this and when we get not back to normal, but when we get through this, um, I kind of feel like there's going to be a big hiring boom. Like there's a lot of organizations that are kind of playing their cards close to the chest right now. That totally makes sense. Um, I think it's really important that organizations continue to attract and, and continue to recruit, but it doesn't make sense to hire right now when it does make sense to hire, what are your perspectives of, of different pockets of new potential employees? For example, entrepreneurs and self-employed folks that, that have really struggled during this time. Do you think some of them are going to try and enter the job market kind of like you did and, and go in-house and, and some of the challenges that you expect them to face? Like, what are your thoughts on organizations having more of a an open mindset towards looking at self-employed individuals as opposed to people that have been those indoor cats uh, within other organizations in the past? Uh, it's a great question. I think that, I think the indoor cat thing is a great um, metaphor right now because a lot of the outdoor cats, you know, or sorry, we're not going to call it with cats. So entrepreneurs right now and people that are self-employed, this is a hard, hard time. Um, I'm not going to lie. I am super grateful that the change happened and now I'm working for an organization. Um, I am still working consulting on the side. So I am dealing with these businesses and all that sort of thing. I think the biggest challenge that businesses are going to have is when they bring someone in, they're going to need to have the best of the best and they're going to need to hit the ground running. I don't think there's going to be a big window for being able to train people. And I think if you want someone to hit the ground running, the best person you can hire is someone who has ran their own shop or who is self-employed because they know how to get it going and get it going quick. Um, I also think that there are going to be people out there who you may assume because of COVID, they no longer, you know, their, their clientele went down and now they're looking to go in house. It's very possible possible that they wanted to go in-house prior to COVID. Um, you know, closing down your business is a really hard thing to do and there's a lot of egos involved. And, you know, even though I'm still operating mine on the side, I had a lot of people ask me, you know, what happened? What happened? Did it go wrong? It's like, no, I just got a great opportunity. And I think that, you know, some business owners might be, might've been too ashamed to walk away, um, mm -hmm. even though they needed to for whatever reason at that time. So I think there's going to be a lot available. And I think that if employers really want the, the best of the best, um, they should go after them. I think that, I, you know, there's always that uh, saying that people who have been employed, self-employed for a while are unemployable, um, that, you know, they don't listen well and they want to do their own thing. I kind of look at it more as, you know, to go back to the, the animal analogy, you know, you want to get some a puppy from the pound not from a breeder you know and the puppies from the pound you know that might have had a rough life they are going to appreciate everything you give them like mm. that steady paycheck and i think that right now having bringing somebody in and giving them that level of security you're going to get back hard work you're going to get back loyalty and you're going to get back 
more than you would if you were just concerned that, you know, they might be a little bit too mouthy at the table. Too mouthy at the table? I will admit, I told my, my CEO and my COO, who I report to, um, you know, I, I, if you're looking for a yes man, you're not going to get them. I'll always be polite, but I, I speak my mind. And I think if you are someone who's self-employed and you are looking to go into a corporation or a company, you have to be honest about who you're actually going to be, not be your representative or be on your best behavior like it's a blind date. So I'm really curious, like everyone's doing Zoom calls, everyone or whatever video conferencing calls, um, everyone is doing their, their four o'clock beers on a Friday. Like, there's, there's a lot of stuff I'm seeing on the internet that I think uh, is good spirited, but at this point, it's kind of just more annoying than anything. Um, how, how, how is your team kind of staying sane right now? Like being in that high pressure space, like even if it's research, there's still, um, it must be a high pressure environment. Um, you know, how is the team staying sane and, and what sort of new rituals have you kind of discovered that, that you guys are celebrating together to, to stay strong? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think one of the initial things that we did, like I said, because I used to do this for five years, I had all the tools that you use now, but now <clears throat> we have to use the more corporate tools. So I had to introduce my team to Slack, right? Which wow. seems so 1992. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. So I had to introduce my team to Slack because they needed a way to be able to communicate and not flood each other with, with inboxes. So right. I think, um, other, other people are starting to learn those simple tools, but I hear you about the noise. I think in a research environment, um, some of the researchers and some of the team members tend to work in silos anyway. Right. Uh, so they're kind of used to it, but I think the collaboration and how quick it moves especially in healthcare. Um, you know, we, we would have days where we would have a communication ready to go out. And, you know, as I'm hitting send, I would get a call from my COO saying stop and things have changed. And oh. we've been on task force with the Ontario government and with the um, federal government to shape how things will be rolling out based on our evidence-based research. And, you know, I think, I think the phone, it's a big thing. Yeah, the phone, I think the picking up a phone is, uh, it seems so foreign, but now it seems so normal. And like now when I have calls, it's, I typically send a message back. Is it, do you want a phone or zoom? Like, do you want a video or not? Like, like you said last night, should I shower to tomorrow? <laughs> I think that's great. But it, it does seem to be such a basic human thing. One thing I want to touch on quickly is, um, I can't help but notice that your hair has grown since we last, uh, hung out. Um, <laughs> Mine has not, um, but I have noticed that there's a lot of people that now need a haircut. And, you know, it's one of these things where I don't know what people's normal schedules are, but typically once a month-ish, I would say. Um, we're now in month two, there's a lot of people that need haircuts. And so a couple members of, on my team, uh, one of them is, is fortunate that his partner actually knows how to cut hair. So he's, he looks great. A couple others, however, have had to resort to do-it-yourself cuts, not like mine. Um, that then led to a, a whole rabbit hole of YouTube stuff. Did you know that men wax their, no like their nostril hairs? Have you ever seen these YouTube videos? Um, I try not to, to, to go there much because it is a dark rabbit hole and it's hard to get out of. And it also affects the algorithm and then you get, start getting suggested some weird stuff. Um, okay. Also, to be clear, <laughs> So because I manage a lot of people's YouTube channels because of the, the video production, it's just easier for, for my team to go in. I always have to be aware that when I'm looking at a video that it's under my profile. So when my client logs in, they don't are bombarded by nose hair videos and wondering why they're, I've messed up their algorithm. I don't know if they know that it's me, but sometimes it happens where um, somebody had, uh, my kids were watching cartoons and they were like, the algorithm's all messed up. I'm like, oh, sorry. Um, for the nose hair, um, I, I, well, I guess my question is to you is, did you use it as a how-to or did you use it for informational purposes only? No, I use it for informational, if, as you can see, this is my, my nose hair, ear hair, rounded edging tool. Mm. But 
I did YouTube, I uh, searched YouTube this morning for a video of it because someone told me and I was like, really? So now I'm on YouTube looking at what my recommendations are. And there is, here's, here's my top four uh, YouTube things right now. One is a wrestling video. Uh, AJ Styles is back and speaks out about Boneyard Match. Great. One is a Taylor Swift video. Three is a Great White Shark Encounter whilst kayaking. And four is nasal grooming. So I think I'm in trouble. Are you a Swifty? Come on. Tay-Tay? <laughs> how, how did you not know that? I, I didn't know. I know that you also appreciate country music like I do. I do. And just to you, come back to the Taylor Swift thing, just to, yeah. just to, did you know that she wrote a song about me once? I know we've never met, but she has a song that, that one of the lyrics is, he's so tall and handsome as hell. And I mm. thought, I have to be your fan now because, you know, she speaks to me. Um, it's true. But no, that, that, I don't have hella good hair, so that's not, that's me. But I, I do love me some Tay-Tay and I do enjoy country. Uh, and I catch flack for that and I don't care because it's, it's great. I love it. You know what? I found that um, maybe even in times like these sort of thing, um, it's just happier music. Like it it's is. not, yeah. it's not, you know, like the, the weekend, that's dark shit. It, it is. See? You know, <laughs> I don't need, I don't need to know about someone's drug use and, and what that does to their face or the no. feelings of their face. No. Not judging, just saying, I, uh, not my thing. You know? No, no, not my thing either. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. just conscious of the time, um, what's the thing that you're most looking forward to once it's safe to go outside? And you can say getting away from your kids, they'll never see this video. Your words, not mine. Um, I think uh, I made the mistake of watching Waco um, and it's not the, the subject matter, but it, subconsciously it did something to me because they were trapped in that thing for six for 60 days and it was right around our like it was similar to our marking and i kind of had this moment of marge on the plane on sunday and i was like i need out i need out i need out i need out and i i literally just drove to a parking lot and took one of my husband's masks and went in and got skittles and runts and um sweet tarts and I sat in the parking lot listening to music at like 10 o'clock at night by myself because it was to like have a moment of freedom and independence because yeah. I'm really independent so it doesn't even really matter where I go or what I do it's just the ability to when I choose I can go wherever I want as long yeah. as my children are cared for well that that seems like a very reasonable very mature Okay. Um, I look forward to the day of not having to line up at the grocery store in those six feet things. And I don't have an issue with the lineup. I have an issue with the people that don't understand why are you six feet away and then they're encroaching and it's like, you know, oi. you know, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think there's a, not to be insensitive, but I think there is a certain level of, um, of, uh, responsibility that, that people are going to learn uh, as a result of this. And that, that, that's tough, that sucks. But um, I, do, uh, I do look forward to cruising the cereal aisle and just browse. I don't, even, I don't ever buy it because I'll just eat it like a dog and just, you know, that's no good. But I am looking but forward just to just the ability to, to, to look at things that you might want to investigate that isn't on your list that you've strategically ordered in the order of the aisles because they're all one way. That's right. And I, I traditionally shop like a European. I go to the grocery store at end of day every day and I buy the food for that, that day. And that's my decompression time normally. Uh, but now not so much. Um, but you know, we'll get there. We'll all, we'll all bust through this. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, come out of this better as people in society and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a matter of time, but Stacy, I appreciate you taking the time. I hope, uh, I hope the, uh, the reporters and the media and all that kind of stuff keep pumping out your stuff. That's great. Um, you guys are doing great work and, and helping people save other people, which is awesome. And I look forward to uh, hanging out with you at the club uh, <laughs> another time, even if that requires uh, a suit jacket. Um, I may wear my wrestling t-shirt under the suit jacket, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do. That's okay. I'll, I'll, make, sure, I'll make sure it's allowed. There we and go. Thanks for making me sound super pretentious by mentioning the class. Really You're welcome. It. I am the place. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, you be good. All right, you be good. Thanks, John. Yeah.